In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. Fluid is a generic term that refers to materials that take the shape of the container in which they are stored. Fluids can be either liquids or gases, like air. Fluid motion can be analyzed using governing equations, provided the condition of a continuum is met. A fluid is a continuum when the density of the fluid does not vary significantly within the area of study. The continuum condition can be invalid in rarefied flows such as the upper atmosphere or in a vacuum. Fluid flow can be quite simple such as the flow in straight tubes or it can be quite complex such as the wake over a blunt body. Fluid flow has been studied extensively over several centuries in order to harness its immense power and understand its effects on our environment. To use fluid flow in design, we must solve the equations which govern its motion and forces. The equations can be solved analytically for only a few simple test cases, hence we must use numerical methods and the power of a computer to solve the complex governing equations for fluid flow. Using numerical methods and a computer to solve the fluid flow equations is called computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. The number of applications for which CFD can be used span many industries. A major portion of fluid dynamics problems are solved today using CFD methods. Before we can adopt CFD for fluid flow analyses, we must understand the application of the method, the advantages of using CFD, the type of information that can be learned from a CFD analysis along with its assumptions and limitations. One fundamental property of fluid motion is the material property viscosity. Fluid viscosity creates friction between the fluid motion and the solid walls containing the fluid. This friction, called shear force, opposes the fluid motion. In idealized fluid flow analyses, viscosity is ignored and the flow is called inviscid. However, viscosity in real fluids cannot be ignored, particularly if accurate analysis of flow phenomena is required. Due to viscosity, fluid boundary layers are created, which have a large impact on the generation of eddies, where flow separates, as well as pressure and frictional losses. The shear forces arising from fluid viscosity are further classified into turbulent or laminar flow forces. In laminar flow, the fluid moves in layers, or lamina, and looks smooth. In turbulent flow, the fluid is chaotic and contains eddies and mixing between the fluid layers. We use the Reynolds number to determine the difference between these two flow regimes. The Reynolds number is a measure of the relative role of inertia forces due to fluid motion compared to the viscous or shear forces resisting the fluid motion. The analysis of laminar flow is less complex than turbulent fluid motion due to the highly chaotic nature of turbulent flows. However, laminar flow is, on, is limited to small and very regular geometries. On the other hand, turbulent flow is seen in the vast majority of real-world applications. Another classification of fluid flow is compressibility. If a flow is incompressible, the effect of pressure on density is quite small and can be ignored. The density can be treated as a constant. This can greatly simplify the analysis. As density is constant, fluid flow can be solved by continuity and momentum equations alone. However, if the flow of a gas is treated incompressible, then study of shock waves is ruled out. Many other phenomena, such as buoyancy-driven flow, as in the case of natural convection, can also not be solved using the incompressible flow assumption because density variations can be the driving force for fluid motion. If the Mach number, which is the ratio of the flow velocity to the local speed of sound of the flow exceeds 0.3, or if the fluid undergoes very large pressure changes, then compressibility of fluids cannot be ignored. To study air flows above the speed of sound, such as for supersonic flows, requires the treatment of air as compressible. The flow behavior can alter dramatically once supersonic speeds are achieved. Shock waves and large pressure ratios are common in supersonic fluid flow. Jets that are designed to operate in the supersonic range have a different shape than aircraft operating in the subsonic range, that is in the range where Mach numbers do not exceed 0.3. So before a fluid flow analysis can be done, we must determine the flow regime or the type of fluid flow that we are analyzing. 
Is the flow compressible or incompressible? Or what is the Mach number of the flow? Is the flow turbulent or laminar as determined by the Reynolds number? Will the fluid flow show steady or unsteady motion? The Navier-Stokes equations are the equations which govern the motion and forces of the fluid flow. Some exact analytical solutions to the Navier-Stokes equations do exist for a very small set of limited fluid flow scenarios. The Navier-Stokes equations are derived from Newton's second law of motion, that is, force equals mass times acceleration. The forces on the fluid can include body forces like gravity. For fluid motion, the surface forces are due to pressure acting on the fluid and shear forces due to viscosity. These equations are quite complex. Thus, exact solutions can only be obtained by drastically simplifying these equations. They are nonlinear and coupled to each other as well as being connected to the continuity equation. To solve these equations numerically using the computer, we must convert each of the derivative terms to an algebraic form. Taylor series is one of many ways to turn the partial differential equations that comprise the Navier-Stokes equations into an algebraic form. After all of the partial derivatives have been transformed into algebraic expressions, a matrix equation results for each of the fluid velocities and the fluid pressure. These matrix equations are still nonlinear in the sense that the terms in the A matrix depend on the U values. Also, each of the matrix equations are coupled to the other matrix equations through the variables velocity and pressure. Because the system of matrix equations are nonlinear and coupled, the numerical solution is obtained by iterating through the solution of the matrix equations. Convergence is achieved when variables show increasingly smaller variations with respect to the previous iteration. If a computation moves toward convergence, it is said to be analogous to a spiral, where each successive solution of the matrix equation moves toward the center of the spiral and hence successive computations brings us closer to the answer. How do we know when, we, when the simulation has converged to a solution? Simulation convergence implies that the solution is not changing anymore as the simulation continues to iterate. To assess whether the simulation is converging, we can plot the change in the max, min, and mean of the dependent variables. When these values are no longer changing and the slopes of the curves have gone to zero or a very small number, the solution is converged. Autodesk CFD monitors this information and the solution is automatically stopped when the internal assessment criteria is reached. This concludes our overview of fluid flow.